The views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of Paltalk.com, AVM software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of Peltalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the internet with more than 4 million unique users on demand on iTunes and on YouTube. And uh, thanks to our good friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio, we are now distributed to cable systems that are serving an additional 12 million households. I'm your host, Gary Baumgarten. Now, you may hear a little raspiness to my voice. I was coming in to do the show today, and I was... Um, standing on the uh, train platform and this squall came across that dumped uh, a gazillion gallon, gallons of uh, water on me. It, was, it came across uh, horizontal. It was like a little squall that came across and I got soaked through and through. Then you get on the train and you sit on the train for an hour and a half coming into the city and there's no way to dry off. Um, and I think I've caught myself a bit of a cold, but fortunately it is Friday and hopefully by Monday I will have recuperated, so please bear with me. Uh, yes, those of you who are commenting in text in our virtual auditorium, I am not at the Pell Talk studio. I'm actually at the Mark, Mark Production House in Midtown Manhattan, right at Times Square. Uh, this production house is the house that is producing the live uh, reality television show on Lifetime that runs from 9.30 to 10 o'clock Eastern Time on Lifetime called Matched in Manhattan. And the host of that show, Matt Titus, and his lovely wife, Tamsin Fadal, then come here into this environment at 10 o'clock to hold a chat on relationships. The name of that show is called why hasn't he called? It's done in conjunction with Lifetime Cable Television. And today at 9.30 Eastern Time, another Lifetime show, when it comes off the air, the fans of that show will be coming on to Pal Talk as well. That show is called How to Look Good Naked. I think in my case, Dan Caputi, who is here <laughs> with me, I think in my case, there's no help. That's why I always wear clothes, even in the locker room. But maybe those of you who are concerned about how fit you look, you want to see that show and then come on to Pal Talk. So anyways, that's that deal. Uh, anyway, we're here to discuss more serious issues. You know, the, um, the prognosticators just got it wrong. They just got it wrong in New Hampshire. They suggested in New Hampshire that Barack Obama was going to win the Democratic presidential nomination in double digits, but he did not. In fact, Hillary Clinton beat him pretty handily. And, you know, even before this election, I think that there has been a groundswell of uh, public opinion against the mainstream media, the pollsters, the pundits. Gary, you dropped out. You're too low. We can't hear you. Okay, how's that? Even before this election in New Hampshire, I think there was a groundswell of, uh, of uh, belief among the American people that they no longer trusted the news media, the pollsters, the political pundits to tell them who they ought to be voting for, basically. And I thought it would be a good idea to call into our show today Stephen Hill to kind of give us his perspective, try to tell us where we go now with the presidential campaign. Stephen is the director of the Political Reform Program at the New America Foundation. Uh, Hill believes that while New Hampshire and Iowa offered a first picture of candidate strength, the real picture will probably not be clarified until the Super Tuesday primaries. And he suggests that the system needs to be revamped to be more equitable to all states, proposing three primary gates a month apart, giving all states a chance to have an impact without necessarily controlling the process or negating the impact of later primaries. Now that is a mouthful. And if you're not exactly sure what that means, you're not alone, neither do I, but perhaps Stephen Hill can explain it to us. Stephen Hill, welcome to News Talk Online on Paltalk.com. And boys, we are not hearing the guests now.
Uh, Stephen Hill, are you with us? Well, I'm not hearing Stephen Hill. Uh, while Boaz is trying to straighten that out, I want to let uh, people, he dropped off the telephone. After such a great introduction, he dropped off of the telephone. So I'm going to uh, start going down the list of callers and give you a chance to talk. But if you want to uh, participate again after Stephen joins us, uh, we will allow for you to do that as well. Uh, I'm going to go to Matt in Wichita as my first caller. Uh, Matt, welcome to News Talk Online on Paltalk.com. Uh, yes, uh, Gary, uh, there's been uh, some developments in New Hampshire as we speak in the last couple of hours in New Hampshire. We have the, uh, there's people on the ground from the Kucinich office down there has filed and asked for a recount. There's also been a Ron Paul that has paid the Secretary of State in New Hampshire $2,000 for a recount. This is uh, coming out of New Hampshire. I expect the press conference in the next 24 hours. Back to you, Gary. Well, Matt, that's very good. Of course, it's his prerogative to call for a recount. And this uh, stems from a family of three who claims in the affidavit that they voted for Ron Paul, but in their, um, in their polling station, there were no votes counted on behalf of Ron Paul. But that does not necessarily indicate voter fraud. And if it is voter fraud, it's not enough necessarily to change the outcome of the election. So I don't know what really is to be gained by all this myself. Uh, Stephen Hill is back with us. I guess maybe we could start with your comment, Matt, and toss that at Stephen Hill. I don't know if you caught uh, what Matt from Iowa said, Stephen, but uh, he said that there's some new developments out of New Hampshire. Uh, that uh, Ron Paul is uh, filing for a recount, and what I was suggesting was that even even though there was uh, there was a family of three who claims they voted for Ron Paul, that's not necessarily an indication that uh, uh, there was voter fraud, or even if there was voter fraud, it's not enough necessarily to overturn the results of the election, is it? Right. Um, by New Hampshire law, uh, candidates that finish within a certain margin of the uh, victor have a right to ask for a uh, for a recount, but Ron Paul would not fit that, so he would have to pay for that recount himself. So it's it's really a matter of whether he's willing to pay that um, to to find out what he's you know whatever information he's trying to get. Stephen Hill, director of the political Stephen reform uh, program the at the New America Foundation. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, let's talk about this for a second, and let's get to the more global issue of what happened in New Hampshire. Um, th as I understand it, and from my covering of elections that were challenged in the past, even if you can prove fraud or a poor count, it is totally meaningless unless you can prove that there were enough votes lost to change the outcome of the election, right? Well, I, I mean, there's uh, several different goals that you have in a situation like that. One would be to see if the outcome of the election was, in fact, affected, and um, that certainly is the most important goal. But then the other goal would be if for some reason the voting equipment didn't work or something about the election administration was off, you'd want to discover that regardless of the outcome of the election changing because it could affect future elections. If it's an issue of voting equipment, there may be other states that use that particular voting equipment, and if you've spot, uh, found some sort of defect in that equipment, you certainly want to know about it and alert the other states to that. So 